We have a session today called the No Compromise Zone. I think that that's an expression you hear on television occasionally. This is the No Compromise Zone. Well, God had that idea a long time ago, 600 years before Christ, a young man by the name of Daniel. Back 605 years before Christ, he was taken as a prisoner of war from Judah into Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. So in Daniel chapter 1, verse number 8, verse number 9, it says, But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that the king drank. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. I also encourage you to check on Daniel chapter number 3, verse number 16 and 18. I think we'll be able to throw that illustration in before we finish. But uh, when they brought the four Hebrew children over, Daniel plus his three compatriots, uh, brought them over. They were outstanding before they got there, by the way, I should mention. And then they were going to train them for three years by giving them the king's wine and the king's food. Now, I don't know about the king's wine, how that could be defiled. But they, Daniel mentioned that, so evidently there was something about it. I don't know if it was the wine that was... Uh, being offered to the idols. I don't know what was defiling about it, but something was. Daniel said, we can't do that. And uh, then the food. Now, we do know that because they were Israelites, that they were not allowed to eat pork. So consequently, there was something there that Daniel said, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Two things I want to bring to your attention was that he could do everything else, but he couldn't do that. So there are a lot of things that you can do that your boss or your employer or the president or the governor or the police or whatever else authorities in your life uh, might say you need to do. There's a whole lot you can do that is not rebellious or not unsubmitted. So Daniel gained such favor because he was willing to do everything that they demanded. But if you go beyond that and compromise, even those that we consider pagans or unbelievers, those that you consider the opposite of whatever your convictions are, if you compromise, and I hope that everybody understands it today, including politicians and Christians and everybody else, as soon as you compromise the word of God, your convictions and the word of God, as soon as you compromise, they will lose respect for you. You think that you're making yourself acceptable, but you're doing the very opposite. As soon as you compromise, everything that you just said is just is flushed away. There is no validity in it to it anymore. So the, the, the Bible says very, very clearly that we can do everything you demand of us. You know, for spouses that are married to uh, unbelievers, you know, a lady says, well, I just, he just doesn't want me to go to church on Wednesday nights. And I say, well, you know, I, I don't know if that's in the Bible. You know, that to me, that's not a point of compromise. That's not a point of you having to go against the word of God. God doesn't say you have to go to church Wednesday night. Why don't you do what you're, well, he wants me to go out fishing with him. And every now and then it's on Sunday. Well, who cares? Go fishing with him. Whenever you understand that you can do so much without compromising. But if there's an actual biblical, if I do this, I go contrary to God. And you say, no, I can do this much, but I can do more, no more. And people will respect that because if somebody requires that you sin, then you have to stop there. It says, I can't do that. I can do this much, but I cannot sin because otherwise I then make myself an enemy of God. I break fellowship with God. So there is a no compromise zone. And the interesting thing is Daniel said, just, just allow us 10 days that we can prove to you that if we do it God's way, we're going to be better. So the steward of the chief eunuch said, okay, we'll let you do it 10 days and we'll test you. And after 10 days, he found everything about them was healthier. They were sharper. In fact, the Bible says that they were 10 times better. There is a compromise where you sell your soul out that God says you lose. And the same thing happened whenever it was time for them, the three Hebrew children, to be thrown into the fiery furnace. In chapter number three, they said, O king, we can do a lot, but we can't do that. And God will save us. But if he doesn't, we're still going to do it God's way. There is a no compromise zone. We can do this much, but if it causes us to sin, we have to respond to say, God is first, God is priority, and the word of God has a standard and a plumb line. We cannot break that. Every Christian must learn the no compromise zone. 
I love you. 